Switzerland reached the World Cup knockout stages with a 2-2 draw against Costa Rica, ensuring they finished second in Group E behind Brazil. They went undefeated in their three group games to seal a second round clash with Sweden, impressing not only with their results, but with the way they played. Vladimir Petkovic lines his sides up in a 4-2-3-1 formation, though the shape changes greatly depending on the phase of play. Goalkeeper Jan Sommer is protected by a back four that sees centre-back duo Fabian Schaar and Manuel Akanji, flanked by Stefan Licksteiner and Ricardo Rodriguez. In front of them, Valon Barami and Granit Xhaka form an energetic and technically adept double pivot. Jerdan Shakiri slots into the right wing berth with the versatile Steven Zuber on the left, while the hard-working Blair and Zamali supports a lone striker. Harris Seferovic is usually chosen to lead the line, though Mario Gavranovic is an increasingly viable alternative. In their opening game of the tournament, Switzerland nullified Brazil for large spells to secure a 1-1 draw against the odds. That match offered evidence of an effective defensive structure and pressing game, tactical aspects that could be helpful in the knockout rounds where mistakes can prove particularly costly. Defending in a horizontally compact 4-4-2 mid-block, they generally look to force opposition possession wide through the front two, who operate zonally and rarely press the opponent's first line of build-up. Shifting intensely from side to side, the duo constantly position themselves so as to form cover shadows on opposition midfielders, blocking passes into the centre. And, when the opposition do pass into the wider areas, Switzerland's intense man-orientated midfield press is triggered. In these situations, the ball near winger, central midfielder and fullback all move up to apply pressure to their opposite men, while one of the front two moves laterally to provide support. This form of pressing has the effect of reducing the opposition ball receiver's time and space. While the opposing ball player technically has a number of open passing options, there is little to no room for error. This often discourages forward or inward passes, leading to the opposition going backwards or long. When attacking, Switzerland's 4-2-3-1 morphs into a rough 3-1-5-1 shape. Both fullbacks position themselves high on their respective flanks, while Barami drops deep either between the centre-backs or to the right of Shah. Petkovic instructs his side to play out from the back and from goal kicks, even when facing a high press. Sommer is comfortable with the ball at his feet, which helps when building up, though Barami and Xhaka's movements are more important in this respect. By forming a back three with Shah and Akanji, Barami frequently allows Switzerland to gain numerical superiority through the creation of 3v2 or 3v1 situations. Xhaka then positions himself centrally in front of the back three, moving laterally to facilitate a line-breaking pass. All of this aids the team in resisting pressure and establishing control possession. The Swiss attack is underpinned by a good positional structure that sees players take up positions on different horizontal and vertical lines. The structure is dynamic, though its principles always remain the same. For instance, if Shakiri decides to move wide to the right-hand side, Licksteiner will not simply stay in this high-wide position. Instead, he will drift into the right-inside channel. By varying their positions so as not to be on the same line, players don't block one another's passing lanes and ensure better angles for combination play. Another benefit of the system's fluidity is that opponents can be left confused as to who they should mark. One of Switzerland's favourite methods to progress an attack is diagonal passes in from the wings. While both fullbacks push high, neither is specifically focused on hitting the byline or whipping in crosses for the lone striker to finish. Rather, they look to play passes inside to one of their more advanced teammates behind the opposition's midfield line. The wingers, Shakiri and Zuba, both look to move infield to receive the ball in more central areas, though their roles are slightly different. While Zuba focuses mainly on attacking in space in the opposition defensive line, Shakiri is allowed to roam with greater positional freedom. Within this role, the Stoke City man is encouraged to come inside onto his left foot and make use of his dribbling skill, pace and long-range shooting. On occasion, the 26-year-old's insatiable desire to get the ball sees him drop unnecessarily deep centrally, reducing his effectiveness in the process. However, the creative license afforded to him generally benefits the team's attacking play. Switzerland are this World Cup's unsung surprise package. With Croatia thrashing Argentina and Mexico upsetting Germany, their draw with Brazil, late win over Serbia and subsequent progression have gone under the radar. But with a reasonable second round draw, an organised defence and a dynamic possession game, Pekovic's side have what it takes to go deeper in the tournament than most expected.